British Airlines Euro League in association with Yeah, now, in this game, one goal, one team, fight for that possession, gotta act fast, another shot, another pass. Devotion. There's all to play for tonight. Every basket means more. All right, welcome back to the Players View. My name is Jake Cohen. I am joined by my boy Mike Roll. We got a good one for you tonight. We got game four, a seed, Mike. We got Bologna and Basconia. Bologna, the host tonight. Both teams, seventeen and sixteen. The winner will be an eighth place matchup, playing against none other than Maccabi Tel Aviv in the play-in on Tuesday. So this game, not only is it going to be a lot of fun, players view, it is also going to be our first scouting experience for me. I will get all the first-hand plays, trends. Let's hear from Coach Ivanovic. Sure, this is an important game for if he, who wins this game, he, is, uh, he have big advantage uh, in uh, playing. Uh, we want the fight. We want the fight. We think we have possibility. Uh, we will fight 40 minutes. That's right. The winner tonight will be 8th place and the loser will be 10th place. So it's a big drop between going from 8th place, getting two shots and making it uh, to the playoff in the top 8 versus 10th, which means you got to go on the road, win that 9 seed matchup and then win once more against the loser of the 7-8 matchup. So the game tonight, lot on the line. Let's hear from uh, Coach Mark. important game. Uh, after 33 games of regular season, uh, we cannot look too far away. Uh, we just uh, focus on the future, and uh, good news is that we will have a future. All right, so before we get way too far into the ins and outs of this matchup, we got a lot going on. First things first, let me wish a very happy birthday to my partner in crime, Mike Roll. Mike, mazel tov, buddy. What do you got to say for yourself? How old are you? Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother. Toda, actually, uh, turned 37 years young today. Wow. I can't believe that. I still feel like I'm in my prime, 31, still hooping, but... Here we are. We're watching hoops, so there's not much better than, than spending this Friday morning, late morning for me, late evening for you, uh, together doing the player's view. That's right. It's going to be a lot of fun. We got another Friday night once again together, Mike. Um, the winner gets eighth place. The loser gets tenth. We will get into all the ins and outs of the matchup in just a second. But first, we want to thank the folks on Twitter, on X, and on YouTube, watching our pregame show when the ball is about to go up in the air for the first time. Make sure you get over to Yearly TV. Uh, still got that promo code going. Make sure you get that in time for these play-in games and the playoff games. There you see the standings down to the very last games of the very last round. I hope, no matter what happens, that this is not the last player's view that we get to do. But who knows, you know, if Maccabi gets hot and goes on a run, maybe Player's View will, uh, well, it'll continue just without me. But, you know, really, that's not the same. <laughs> the show must anyway. go on. <laughs> right, right, exactly. <laughs> Mike, let's get into this matchup a little bit first. Yeah. What do you see tonight? Because Bologna's really got to turn it around. They've lost six in a row, and there's a lot on yep. the line tonight. What do they need to do to turn it around and get the win at home? Just be themselves. Uh, they got the home court, obviously. I think that's really going to help them. Um, although it takes me back to the Euro Cup final, I think a year, uh, a couple years ago, when they were at home playing for that, and 
it's almost like when you're at home, you have a little bit more pressure to perform better. The crowd kind of expects it. So any miss or any mistake and turnover, and then it's, you know, a lot of oohs and ahs. Like, why did you do that? So um, hopefully they learn from that experience, the guys who are on the team. But they do have a veteran squad, so I expect a very good showing from them. I uh, look for Marco Bellinelli to get hot. I just feel it in my in my t fingertips. Uh, he's been playing. <laughs> he's just a funny guy to watch. You know, he's just going to shoot it no matter what. These crazy shots, most of the time it goes in. Sometimes it, it doesn't go in at all, and he keeps firing it. But hopefully we get a nice master display today. Um, some storylines that I like to think about is Toko against his old team. You know, he spent so long in Basconia, so he's always going to want to show them that, hey, maybe you should have paid me a little bit more money and I'd still be around that type <laughs> of thing. But, uh, yeah, you want to see that, and I'm just ready for a big-time fight. Absolutely. So that's a good one. I, I got Bellinelli down in my notes for sure. Uh, has not been shooting the ball great the last five five games or so. Right. But a guy like that, I, there's no way that he that has even entered his mind. You know, once the right. the ball goes up and he's he's in the flow of the game, any shots that he would have shot are going up. And if today's a good day, it's a good day. And if not, it's yeah. not. But that's the shooter's mentality, and he has that 100. percent One of the best shooters in our league, and I think uh, the best off balance shooter in our league. The shots mm -hmm. he takes, mm -hmm. you know, going in all directions is just ridiculous. Yeah. And on the flip side of that, it's the perfect transition to the guy on the other side of the ball. Marcus Howard becoming the leading scorer in the league after that 35-point performance last game. Mike, how do you feel about that? To have just a pure shooter be the leading scorer in the early. That's very impressive stuff and evidenced by his percentages this year. Yeah, the percentages are wild. I think it's, to me, it's the hardest just because of his minutes. You know, it's not like he plays 36, 37 minutes a game. He comes in and he just turns up the microwave immediately. As soon as he gets flame on that throw. court, he's looking at just flamethrower. You said it. Yeah, just all types of shots. His dribbles, dribble combination into the shot. Like the pickup is super quick. He's always got his feet set, it seems like. And yeah, just the ability to make very difficult shots especially at his stature. You know, he's not the tallest of guards. I'm just super impressed. Yes, his isolation shots, high percentage, off-screen shots, yeah. high percentage, catch-and-shoot yeah. shots, high percentage. So just really impressive stuff there from top to bottom. Another thing I want to look at, last time we did a Basconia game, we did Basconia and Ephes, and we talked about the similarities yes. and differences between him and Shane Larkin. And we yes. talked about the creating that Shane Larkin has has come to uh, be known for, as well as his scoring. And that's one, going to be another thing that we can look at tonight. Uh, in addition to his scoring, how can he create for others on his team? Uh, even looking at the other side, we talked about Bellinelli. You know, even though Bellinelli doesn't average a whole bunch of assists, he creates a lot for his team because he creates a lot on these off screens. He forces the bigs to help, and yeah. he's really good at that over-the-top pass to the big when they step up too much. So... It's going to be an interesting to watch what sort of creation he can get tonight as well as his scoring. Uh, important to note, he did not play very well against Bologna in their first matchup. Uh, so something to watch tonight. But a quick aside, Mike, uh, I, call, I saw Coach Messina last night um, in the tunnel before the game. You know, I said hello. We, we go way back. Uh, he and co my college coach, Coach Bob McKillop, are very close. So I see him almost every summer in Davidson. So I uh, got to know him quite well. And you know what he said when he first saw me, Mike, coming down the tunnel? He goes, there's my favorite broadcaster. Oh, and immediately, <laughs> I know, I know. And at first I was like, wow, what a, what a really nice thing to say. You know, that's great. I, you know, <laughs> such a great, great to see you, Coach. Thank you. I appreciate that. And then after we finished our conversation, I was walking away. I was like, wait, he probably meant that just as a little dig to Mike. He probably didn't really mean to pump me up. He just wanted to knock Mike down a little bit. That's funny. Yeah, Coach Messina, always uh, off the court, always like a jokester, uh, cares about you and what you're doing off the floor. So he's always in tune. And I do remember, uh, I believe it was last season, you know, he, he mentioned to you something about the player's view and uh, maybe was ribbing with you a little bit. So, yeah, Props to him for keeping that going. I'm going to have to send him a message here at halftime when we're off the air and say, hey, 
I heard what you said. You know, I'm going to be uh, next time I see you, I might give you a little little knuckle sandwich or something, coach. <laughs> wow, that's great. All right, yeah, I mean, he definitely deserves something, but uh, I, I got to yeah. say, his he, he's spot on with his taste. Um, obviously, the best broadcaster <laughs> out of the two of us, Coach Messina, with an eye for talent, as usual. Yeah. Uh, All right. Getting back to tonight. So, looking back. Looking at the standings, I should say, the top four is set, Mike. We got uh, Real Madrid, Pana, Monaco, Barcelona. Set five and six, still up for grabs. Fenerbahce Mm -hmm. and Olympiacos uh, in contention for both of those. Seven is set, Maccabi Tel Aviv. Nine is set, and Adulu Efes. And eight and ten, still up for grabs. So very interesting that we don't have, you know, the last two spots open or yeah, what have yeah. you, <laughs> you know, eight and 10 being open. That's just the beauty yeah. of the, some of the intricacies and quirkiness of the play. Yeah. A little bit weird uh, how that works out, you know, with FS winning uh, yesterday's match. Uh, I'll tell you what, man, I, they kind of got that spirit of a, a fighter of a champion. Um, I was just, very impressed by their game just took control and completely blew out red star so uh with that championship pedigree they definitely did that uh just about coming up on the game though we're gonna have a moment of silence for the explosion that happened just out of outside of bologna this past week so uh, we're gonna get ready for that as we see right there the italian sensation gabriel proceeded big time injury felt very bad to see him out uh for the rest of the season and implications for the italian national team with that injury you know you, with the olympics coming up this summer you know that's very unfortunate I, that's a, a dream for a lot of players so i you hate to see that all injuries but man that's uh, a lengthy time to be getting injured well at least he gets to take in a great basketball game back in his home country so uh before we get uh you know, into this tip-off, Mike, I want to talk about the four-man matchup tonight. You know that's a, a special mm. place in my heart. But tonight we got yes. uh, Toko Shengelia, been doing it at a super high level for such a long time, one of the staples in this yeah. league, um, you know, at, at the tops in many statistical categories. And going up against him, he's got two really good four-men to go against, Setakerskis and Moneke. Moneke, obviously the mm. standout of the bunch. His improvement from last year has been talked about at length but both of them gonna have their hands full with the other you know shangalia the crafty vet still doing at a high level for such a long time moneke the up-and-comer but uh man let's get into that matchup a little bit yeah that's it's a very important one uh it's almost similar to toko's career you know he started out in the the lower levels of you know europe uh kind of similar how moneke has started and just built his way up. Toko kind of broke out, in my opinion, in Basconia. Uh, really played phenomenal in, in so many different ways. And Shime is uh, showing his ability this year. You know, not just scoring around the rim like most four men, but man, catching the rebound, running out on the break. You even seeing like dribble combinations, step back threes. Uh, the energy has always been there for his career. But man, he's he's really put a lot of skill work into his craft, and it, it's really showing this year. And, it's probably part in part because of Coach Ivanovich. He always has this young talent, uh, finds talent in the you know nowhere places, and really brings it out of them. So, got to credit your hats off to Coach Ivanovich. Definitely. So we will we will look at the uh, strengths and weaknesses of those matchups in a little bit more. Obviously, that's something I'm going to be looking at because I'm going to be covering one of those guys. Uh, in just a few days, so we will get into that. Yep. But now let's take a break to honor the moment of silence, and we will be back with you in just a bit. <laughs> 